previously on American Girl Doll Horror Stories, so tell us Chanel, what can we do for you? Well, it is like this. I came here because I wanted to help my friend George. I think it will be good if we can reason with Georgina and let her know that we do not wish her harm. If only we can get through her. I have an idea. Let me tell you all about it. Hello, Georgina. We would like to talk to you. I can't believe you will do this. What are you going to do now? Gang up on me. I will not let you. I am going to make you all sorry. What happened to Georgina? Georgina, oh my gosh, what in the fairy world happened? Georgina turned into a sea monster! <coughs> Georgina, dear, can you hear us? Can you speak? <coughs> I don't think she can speak. All she makes is those animal noises. Poor girl, what could possibly have happened? I am not sure. We were the only ones there, and I'm sure none of us casted a spell that will result into something like this. Yes! Even if I didn't like her before, I will never turn anyone into an actual monster. I mean, I called her a monster in the past, but I was just joking. <coughs> now, now there is no need to be angry, my dear. I promise you that we will work on getting you back to normal. Yes. You have our word that we will do anything to fix this issue. Right, Freya? I guess. But what can we do? I have never experienced anything like this before. <coughs> Sigh. Yes, I know who to ask for help. Will you be asking help from Gloomy? By end. She was the one who taught me how to become a witch. Perfect. Where does she live? Can we go there now? Wait! Is this the ant that I am thinking of? Probably. And Chanel, we can't go where she lives. Oh, but why? Because she is dead. But we can summon her spirit. We need her help because she knows more about curses and spells than I do. However, I need to prepare for it since summoning spirits will need tremendous energy. Boy, I can't wait! Have you met this ant before Freya, when she was still alive? Yes! And you definitely will not be able to forget her. Welcome to American Girl Doll Horror Stories where every Sunday, we will share a spooky story that will send shivers down your thorny spine. I am Gloomy Sunday and I am your narrator. And of course, my cat, Soot. Without further ado, let me call my book of shadows so we can begin tonight's spooky story. By what creeps, what crawls, by what does not. Book of shadows, dilly dally not. In the Philippines, many mysterious being run abound. A young wife and mother will encounter a being much feared in that country and this is that story. This story happened when my parents were still living in the Philippines. They were both rice farmers. The villagers where my parents lived would exchange labors with one another. If you were too lazy to exchange labor with others, they won't exchange labor with you either. It was the easiest and fastest way to get your plot of land finished in time for harvesting. My parents had one child at the time. My oldest sister. They worked hard at the rice field which was a few miles walk. They were behind on their farm due to my mom's dad being sick. They attended my grandpa's bedside for a week. Being a week behind is actually being two weeks behind. They were offered an opportunity to help the family out with their farm and in exchange, the family would also help my parents out. The problem was, they lived 10 to 12 miles away from my parents' village. My parents debated really hard and finally decided they will leave my sister and grandpa for my younger uncles to watch. With that decision, they took off to the farm which ended 12 miles away. It was a whole day's walk due to mountains and creeks. My parents will be gone for about two weeks. 
My mom started missing my sister who was just 3 years old at the time. She sobbed every day to my dad and said that she wanted to see her daughter, but my dad chided her, telling her it was too far of a walk to go back just for a quick visit. So with that, they had no choice and they both continued to work for a few more days. Very soon, my mom nagged my dad again that she missed my sister. She was inconsolable, she was hysterical and was at the point of pulling out her long, beautiful hair in her abject misery. Finally, my dad relented and coldly informed her that if she really wanted to go home, she'll have to wait for other travelers to cross paths. She can then tag along with them. He didn't want her to go by herself since of course, he was worried that something might happen to her. He will remain at their friend's farm to fulfill their part of the bargain. Anyway, it was just a few days more and he can already pick up the slack once my mother returns home. A few more days passed, and some travelers came to rest at the farm where my parents were working. They mentioned they came back from the north exchanging grain and goods with some Chinese people. They were heading back home. Their village was about 20 miles south of my parents' village and they will pass by my parents' village going home. Excited to hear the news, my mom without another word packed up and prepared to leave with them. My dad resigned himself to the fact that his wife was truly determined to see my sister. Although he understood why my mother was so anxious to see her again, he didn't consider it too important himself because daughters are less precious than sons, in his opinion. But since he was becoming impatient with my mother's constant complaints and cries, he just told her to be careful and that he will come home in a few days after he finished their promise of labor and when other travelers pass by. With that, my mom headed home, finally happy that she will again see her firstborn daughter. My mother and the other travelers walked that whole day. Finally, they reached the outskirts of my parents' village by late afternoon. It was still two to three miles away in the distance. The path came to a Y. The right main road continues to the traveler's village while the left drifted down to a tiny road with thick forest trees and a creek that led to my parents' village. My mom thanked the kind travelers for accompanying her and quickly headed left down the trail home. She said as soon as the travelers were out out of sight, she felt a cold, uneasy feeling. The trail she was on was very dark. The trees above shielded out a majority of the sunlight. The trees seemed so green, but lifeless at the same time. There were rumors that the trail my mother was traversing was once a secret trail to escape the Japanese back in the days. Many had died on the trail. The road didn't seem harmful as long as a few people were on it, but my mom all by herself. She said it was the coldest feeling she ever felt in her life. But she braced herself and whispered that just a few more steps, she would be home to her daughter. So she continued her track and added some pep to her walk. She finally came to an area where veins draped the trees and hugged the ground. All of a sudden, she heard crackling noise on her left side like someone was crushing two rocks together. The hair on her arms and neck stood right up. She felt a presence. The sky seemed to darken and the air became chilly. There was a creek on her left down the hill a bit. She glanced down there to see what could it be. She couldn't see much because it was so dark down there. Down a bit more, she saw something black and red. She couldn't make it out. Soon she could see it was a woman-like figure with messy, straw-like hair crouched over crushing rocks. My mom said she was naked with very long, sharp fingernails. Mom said that she feel as if her knees were so weak and numb. She couldn't move because of intense fear. The figure seemed to know my mom was there, but it seemed more busy crushing the rocks together. My mom later found the courage to get her wits together and prayed that God will guide and protect her. With that, she ran so fast as if she will leave her spirit behind. She said when she started running, the figure down by the creek started laughing. It sounded like a witch's laugh. It echoed through the dark, thick forest. Mom already knew what the woman was. She was an Aswang, a vampire-like creature who usually goes out deep at night to feast on humans. Aswangs are not your typical vampires since they not only drink blood, they also eat human flesh. They usually only come out when the moon is out but considering it was only late afternoon, 
It means the Sa Swang is very powerful and could somehow resist sunlight. My mom was suddenly scratched from behind and she recoiled in pain. She catapulted to the air and landed with a smack on the dirt. She immediately got up to face the Aswang and it was so close to her that she could clearly see its lolling tongue and sharp, hungry teeth. My mother remembered that she had a machete tied to her waist. She uses that for farming and she was very grateful it was there now. She quickly unsheathed the machete and threatened the Aswang with it. But the Aswang laughed at her pitiful attempt and rushed towards her. My mother swung the machete with her eyes closed shut and felt it connect with the Aswang. She then heard it scream bloodily. As it turns out, she hit it at its arms. It was bleeding profusely. The Aswang looked at its bloody arms and then at my mother. It appeared to be thinking of something and as if deciding that my mother was not worth it, ran towards the opposite direction. My mother of course took that as her cue to book you home. She couldn't say how long it took her to run home, but all she knew was when she got to the edge of town, she felt like she survived the war. She said her hair bun was so drenched in sweat, my grandpa asked if she took a quick swim before she came home. She told my grandpa what happened and he told her that the trail is haunted by the people who lost their lives to the Chinese back in the days. But recently, Aswang seemed to frequent that trail to feast on unsuspecting victims. My grandpa said if it was a dead day and time to feed, they don't care who sees or bothers them. They only get a small window of opportunity to feast. Grandpa told mom that she was very fortunate that her machete was still caked with dirt. It is believed that the only way you can injure an aswang with a sharp object is if it is rubbed with soil. It will also help if you consume dirt, which my mom probably did when she fell after the aswang scratcher. My mom couldn't be happier to be home. She got sick, so my grandpa took a few chicken and called her spirit back. He also applied medicine to her wounded back. My dad came home a few days later but didn't experience anything. He was with five other villagers and the family they exchanged labor with. The whole village soon forbade anyone to walk that trail alone. Recently, my uncles who are still back in the Philippines, we migrated to Germany, told my parents that their old village is now deserted and has become a ghost village because too many people kept dying. It is believed that a group of ravenous Aswangs decimated the population, but we couldn't be too sure. The trail has vanished due to the lack of travelers and human life. It's barely noticeable now because of the veins, moss, and forest life that has taken over. Getting to the village would take a highly skilled, experienced person who knows the lands and mountains very well. An Aswang is an umbrella term for various shape-shifting evil creatures in Filipino folklore, such as vampires, ghouls, witches, viscera suckers, and transforming human beasts to hybrids, usually dogs, cats, pigs. The Aswang is the subject of a wide variety of myths, stories, arts, and films, as it is well known throughout the Philippines. Spanish colonists noted that the Aswang was the most feared among the mythical creatures of the Philippines, even in the 16th century. Although with no specific motive other than harming others, their behavior can be interpreted as an inversion of the traditional Filipinos values. The Aswang is especially popular in southern parts of Luzon, and some parts of Mindanao and Visayas, especially the Visayan province of Capiz. That is all for tonight's spooky story. Please come back next Sunday as we share another scary story from the dark side of the world. Again, this is Gloomy Sunday and that is my cat, Soot. Bless be. Okay, the magic circle that Gloomy instructed us to make is ready. Let's go and call Gloomy so she can summon her aunt! Be continued.